So while we were our seeing, I thought it would be a good time to go over our goals for this episode. Our next major long-term goal is invention. Invention is such an amazing skill for us, and unlocking it gives us three major things. First of all, instead of dropping or selling to a general store, all of our excess items can be disassembled. This turns them into invention materials and components, which doesn't take up any inventory spaces. Secondly, we also get access to invention machines, which can act somewhat as a pseudo storage for us, but more on that when we get up to 60 invention. And third of all, definitely not the least powerful thing we'll be getting, but we can start adding perks to our gear and tools, which will further bring up our DPS and our ability to gather items. So yeah, invention is quite good, but it's quite a ways off. I'd say a couple hundred hours away at minimum. Um, and I don't want to put out another one hour episode, um, especially when this is so easily split up into three. So this episode, we're going to try to complete one of the three requirements. And we're going to start with the easiest one, which is smithing. Smithing is pretty simple. It's a lot of what we've already been doing where we just mine the ores then we smelt them and then we hammer away into items. But it'll go faster this time because we'll be making burial armor instead of dart tips. On top of that, we're going to get the scroll of efficiency first, which is a dungeoneering rewards trader reward. It gives a 2% chance to save a bar and this works for every bar. So for example, an Ori Calcum plate body plus three, which normally takes 40 bars, to make on average would take 39.2 bars now saving us that 0.8 bar each time as when you do all the math it just works out to a two percent save in bars and that's two percent of time saves it costs 20k dungeoneering tokens so that means we need to start some dunge and to dunge we can't have any items equipped or in our inventory and we can do that by dying however if we do die uh, some of our items will go to death, but these items here at the bottom will be automatically saved. Um, so the Trials Armor we can easily destroy, same with the Expensive Spices and the Wicked Hood. But the Gold Charm and the Gethix Cape are both items that are just going to sit in our inventory and we'll have to drop. So there's this Rune Sphere here, which basically we can, as soon as it turned to Cosmic, we were able to siphon from it. We get this rune dust, which we can add to the rune sphere when it's um, empty and we get a whole bunch of experience for it. So I'm just going to siphon this until it dies. Um, should get us actually fairly close to level 50. So it was pretty lucky. I was just over here on this island because it's a pretty good spawn island. And I saw it at the corner of my eye and I was like, oh, rune sphere. Let's go get a ton of XP. So the rune sphere popped up and we can hand in a thousand dust and pick up 25k XP and we are basically 49 now. So we need like 3k more experience. We got our 50 rune crafting. We can access the rune crafting guild now. And there's this thing called the rune Goldberg machine. So what we do is we put the runes in the three slots and then we uh, get a certain amount of viz that we can use. So we're just doing dunge here. Uh, at the start, the complexity is really low, so we can't really do anything. So I'm just running through the first like four or five floors until we unlock complexity six, and then we'll focus on um, unlocking some stuff, specifically like getting better gear instead of this T20 stuff that we're just given. So we're going to go ahead and bind the catalytic wand and orb. And essentially that means that when we spawn, we, we keep that item instead of having to get it each dungeon. And I'll just do that until we get something better. That's a big one. The Thigat Wand is a T60 weapon, so we'll have considerably more accuracy now. But And I think the Catalytic Orb still gives us air rune, so we don't need to worry about that. So we got up to 49 farming. 49 farming gives us the ability to make cows, but in order to build the large pen, we need 60 construction. So once we get our 20,000 Dungeoneering tokens, we'll go and grind out that 60 construction just because uh, otherwise we're losing uh, experience with farming and I want to make sure that uh, we keep our farming up as much as possible so we can get up to the higher level stuff which will help us out. So we just completed our last dungeon. We got just barely above 20,000 tokens, just like to 56 dungeoneering, so 200k XP. I want to say it took like close to 100 floors. Uh, starting from like the very first one, there's a scroll of efficiency. 
We'll be getting the Scroll of Cleansing relatively soon when we go to do any sort of herb lore training just for the secondary save chance. But this is the one we need right now. So I'm going to confirm the purchase and we can read the scroll. And now we have access to that. And because this is a permanent unlock, it takes no inventory space. But let's go to death and claim our items. I was able to confirm that if you're offline, this timer doesn't count down as I was offline for about 12 hours. Yeah, it'll cost us two GP. Uh, we just have to pay for the drama and staff because we get to keep the other three items for free. If I had been smart enough to use protect item in V0 GP. And we're going to do this the same method as before where we just cut oak logs here outside of the portal and then turn them into planks. So the weekend is about to end and I need to set myself up to AFK during the work week. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mining. The first thing we're going to do is upgrade our ore box to... Ori Calcum, which is the T60 um, item. And then we're also going to get an Ori Calcum pickaxe plus three, as that will give us considerably more mining damage than our current, I believe, just base rune pickaxe that we have. There we go. We got our Ori Calcum pickaxe plus three. So we deal between 33 to 93 damage on average. So that means like 63 per hit. While previously with the rune pickaxe, it was 25 to 75, so 50 per hit. So the place where we mine the Ori Calcite in the Dracolith is right here. They're pretty close to each other. The Ori Calcite is right in this area, and then the Dracolith is just inside this entrance. So we can mine up our full inventory of ores, get our box full, and then get also get our Dracolith, and then go up uh, just up to the Artisan's Workshop and deposit all the ores. The workday is over, and we're back on the construction grind. So we're going to be uh, making oak larders again. I should be able to easily get up to uh, 60 before I need to check the farm again. I have about four or five hours uh, and it's only 120k XP to go. And from yesterday, I was getting about like 40 to 50 even while watching uh, videos on the side and kind of AFKing. So one very important fact that I forgot is that you can build these tea shelves in the shelf space. And that means that you're able to take tea out of it. And while taking tea out of it, um, that drinking that tea gives you a plus two construction boost. So we only actually need to get up to 58 construction instead of 60 construction to build those large pens. So we're here on Apatol cutting down this one mahogany tree. There's another one up there, but I'm just going to stick by this one um, to avoid getting captured by the monkey. So yeah, we just need to get 20 logs, which might take us quite a bit. So we got our 20 logs. Let's head back to Port Serum. So we're going to ask our butler to make us a tea again. Watch him fool around in the kitchen. So we have our tea. Let's hope for good RNG on maintaining the boost long enough. Let's go. We got it first try. 2800 XP. And now we can put three cows in here. Uh, let's get our wood leaves and do another farm run. So we're working on the family crest quest. And one of the items required is uh, a raw bass. But to fish bass, you need to get up to 46 fishing. So instead, I decided to get some sparkling energy because one of the products of sparkling energy is being able to turn tuna so into We have bass. about 10 energy that should be enough for uh, in case we burn stuff because we need a cooked bass. So with our sparkling energy, we're able to make two raw bass here. And because we already have the cooking level, um, we didn't need to worry about training that up, which is very convenient. Gotta love divination. It'll be probably a pretty nice request for stuff like that. So we have two of each of these fish. Hopefully we don't burn both of them. And look at that, we don't burn anything. And then we can also pick up the swordfish in this store, so we don't need to worry about getting that either. So we can completely avoid the high-level fishing requirements. And we hand in the completed crest to Demetheus. One quest point, but we get access to the family gauntlets, which we're going to turn into smithing gauntlets. And we can also put silver and gold in the metal box if we ever care for that but i don't think we'll be doing a lot of crafting training with that but maybe it's kind of nice for some silver stuff if i need it for the dark my request but that's about the only use i can think of there we go we now have the smelting gauntlets very nice for our mining training because we're now able to smith 60 bars at once not much but it's something and I had to do the quest eventually. So the gauntlets are really paying off it's about like a minute and a half to two minutes of afk um, for each inventory so it's really nice for while I'm working I can actually get some progress on this account. 
So we ended up with 526 bars, which is actually probably way too much than we need. I think we only need like 400 and something. Um, but because we're going to be AFKing, I'm going to be making gauntlets because they only take one bar each. So we have the higher chance of completing it without draining out all the heat. So we're going to make gauntlets and then we'll do a full inventory of gauntlets. Then we'll do a full inventory of plus one, then a full inventory of plus two, then a full inventory of plus three, and then turn them all into burial. So that should get us net us 350 per, 700 per, 1.4k per, and 1.4k per. So that's about 4k per inventory slot. So this whole thing will be about 80k experience. We probably have to do that twice. So we just got 70 smithing right here, which means we can move on to necronium equipment. But because we still have about 162 more bars and all of these plus threes can go to burial, I'm just gonna go ahead and use all of the bars we have stored up and then we'll see where we end up. So we're working on our last Orichalcum Burial Gauntlets. We have about 800 experience left in it, so we're gonna be 71. Our first goal here is going to be getting up to 74 so that when we smelt, our extra bar chance um, will give us 10% more bars, which means 10% less mining. So the rest of the grind to 80 isn't as bad. So that's our first goal. Or box complete, let's move on. A cool little trick though is when I add this uh, Necronium Pickaxe to the tool belt, I get back this Orichalcum Pickaxe plus three, and then I can come over here and turn it into an Orichalcum Burial Pickaxe and quickly get rid of that for another 2800 experience. Just a kind of min-maxing optimization you can do. Decided to go ahead and reclaim the Ecto file, just makes for some quick teleports back to um, Port Phasmatis to get to this furnace very quickly. You should come here and it automatically refills and it just saves us the walk back and we don't have to deal with going to like the Canifus Lodestone and all. So we definitely need water skins at this net grade uh, or rock place. I'm trying out 10 this time to see if I can get a full inventory by the time I run out and my HP isn't low but we'll see. So 10 water skins seem to be the perfect amount. I was able to get a full inventory with about half of my HP left. So every time I just come back through Alcarid, I'll go ahead and buy out 10 water skins from Shanty Pass. One other thing is we can buy these desert robes from um, Shanty because we're wearing nothing else, we might as well. And this will reduce the amount of damage we take from the desert. So I talked about Vizwax at the start of the episode when we got 50 runecrafting, but we never ended up actually getting any Vizwax because the combinations have been terrible for a couple days. But there are a couple things I want to use with the Vizwax, so I'm going to go make it now. I went ahead and bought the runes we need. It costs like 50k GP and we're going to get 89 wax out of it. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to extend this prayer daily. It's going to give us double the amount of experience. And tomorrow at reset, when we get more wax, we're going to extend the summoning daily as well. But with the leftover wax, we're going to add it as a quick telly so we can charge with all. And now we have 390 quick charges on our lodestone teleports. If we go to the lodestone network and toggle using quick charges. If we teleport to Berthorp now, it's like any other teleport and it goes much quicker instead of having to wait 15 seconds. So all in all, I just saved myself a boatload of time. 50 cows later, we have our bones done and we can claim the reward. And boom, we got 13,000 extra prayer experience and now we're up to 46 prayer. Very nice. So 72 smithing and it'll see here that we smith necronium 10 times 10% 10 faster. So if we look now, when it's at high heat, we're gaining 22 progress per um, instead of 20 beforehand. So that's 10% more XP per hour while smithing, essentially. Wow, 157 per hit here. Did take us quite a while to get up here, but this will go pretty damn quickly now to 74. 74, so we got our extra bar chance, so we can go back to mining all the way to 80 with our ores. So we've done it. We've mined a thousand necrite and a thousand phasmite, so we can go ahead and make a thousand bars here. Gonna be pretty sweet. 60 bars takes two and a half minutes, and I have to do that 16 times. So we're looking about 45 minutes to smelt up the bars, but that's not the uh, slow part. The slow part is the smithing. Oh, one very important thing that you're probably all screaming at, but we're at 100% uh, respect already. 
So what we're going to do is buy the golden cannon um, as it's a permanent unlock. Essentially what it does is our cannon can now hold 60 cannonballs. Then eventually we're going to get the 90 cannonball cannon and then we're going to get the one that auto restocks. So once we have the 250 percent respect we'll then move on to getting stuff like the blacksmith outfit piece and stuff like that so there we are we smithed up our necronium bars we got some extra ones and we ended up with just over 1100 and we get 750 per bar so that'll get us well over 80 and we'll be done our smithing but before we go and finish off our smithing we want to do some questing and specifically we want to focus on herblore experience because Every week I can do the Herblore D&D, Herbie Werby, and it gets gives me experience based on my level. So if I go in with a higher level, I'm going to get considerably more experience. So 18 medium to large favors is complete. That gave us two antique lamps, which we're going to use in Herblore right away. Boom, 10,000. Boom, 10,000. And we're up to 44. Troll stronghold time. 20k more Herb XP coming right up. And level 47. One goat weed, sir. 11k herbal XP. So the one item I'm kind of concerned about losing is this drama and stuff. Everything else um, would kind of suck to lose, but it's not a big deal. It's kind of why also I wanted to do these tasks now, is it's just a good time before I get a pretty large bank. And then every time I go to the wilderness, I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to lose everything. So one of the tasks requires us to bank with these guys. So I'm going to open up the bank. You can see inside how it's absolutely empty. And there we got the achievement. And this Harrison guy, he gives you the ability to unnote bones. So we might be using him for uh, prayer because butlers in your house can't actually unnote bones. So the only way to unnote them is general store. This is probably the most dangerous part of any level of the... Uh, diary because PKers are very plentiful here. Hey, and we picked up 62 div while going for this. 1300 total. How do we not have the 50 yet? Ah, rip UAM. That's unfortunate. What did we lose? Okay, so the only bad thing to lose there was um, the Draman staff. But we kept the herb bag with all the herbs in it. And we were one memory away. Oh, <laughs> it's so trolly. Now our last task is we talk to Mr. X and uh, to Skull Me. Can I claim any rewards from you? And we finish that. So we have the Wilderness Sword 1. Which we're going to destroy and we have these two antique lamps which we're going to put into herblore and herblore and we got up to level 50 with 2k xp to go to 55. let's go do some herbie werby so we finished our herbie werby and got 100 spirit points and we're 100 away from the herb bag upgrade which will increase the storage up to 100 of each grammy herb which will be really nice for slayers so we can pick that up once it resets on Tuesday. And it's currently Saturday, so we got three or four days for that. But with this incredibly open inventory that we now have, um, it's time to smith. The one other thing to note is I don't really need this ore box anymore because I've mined all the way to 80 smithing and I'm probably not going to be doing any mining or smithing until I go for masterwork, which is going to be quite a ways away. So I'm not going to keep this necronium ore box in my inventory for the next six months. And now our entire bank is a puny staff and a bag of herbs and two mil cash. Buying the second cannon upgrade with our 100% respect, only another 100% to go till we have all the cannon unlocks. So there we are, 80 smithing. Didn't take too long. It was just a lot of AFKing and smithing away. I'm kind of happy to be done, but now we're moving on to much bigger goals. So that's going to do it for the end of this episode. Uh, we got up to our goal of 80 smithing. 
Um, we're well over 1300 total now at 1310, just about to hit 10 mil XP. Those dungeon levels really help. The next episode, we're going to be focusing on the next two skills for invention, needing both crafting and divination to get to 80. So that's going to be a nice little fun grind. I'm also going to do some ancillary stuff like a couple quests, a couple other skills. So it's not just me AFK and crafting for 30 hours and being condensed down to two minutes. Uh, but yeah, that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.